Welcome back. In this video, we'll be looking at F by or otherwise known as filter by. Um, in the last video, we had seen how we can use our aggregation, so our sum, count, min, max, etc., grouped with our by clause in order to do those aggregations and, and group or pivot on those columns of our table. Um, so we're going to take that to the next level and we want to use the result of that calculation to further filter on the original table. So in SQL, I believe you would use having to do this um, and to quote Jeffrey Barr from his Q for Morals book, Q is having none of that. <laughs> Instead, uh, we would use F by. Okay, so to understand the reason why we would use this, we're first of all going to show an example without using filter by. So let's assume we don't know anything about it, which we don't really um, up to this point. Um, so if I'm posed with the question, get all records where the ride duration is less than the average for that taxi's vendor. So first of all, I know I need to first of all find the average ride duration per vendor. So that's something I'm comfortable enough doing. Um, I'm going to do my select average duration by vendor that I learned in the last video, I'm going to call my result res by and I'm going to rename that column to be average duration. So if we run this and um, you'll see there's no result returned. If I want to print that out um, for my own information, I can just retype the name of the variable below. I could have also, though, added the keyword show in front of that. Um, and show is really nice to use when you want to print out the value of the variable without retyping it. Okay, so these are my average durations per vendor. Um, next, I need to do the second part of the query, which is getting all records where the ride duration is less than this number. Um, so to do that, I have to join this calculated value back onto my original table. Um, and to join that on, I'm gonna use a left join. So this is my left join notation. So it's one table left joined by the second table. So Jan09 is my original table um, to just illustrate what's happening there. If I run meta Jan 09 and then I run meta on this result, you can see here beforehand, I've got this many columns and it ends a total. And then after my left join, you can see I've got one new column added on to the very end called average duration. And that's coming from this res by table here. Um, so the fact that I've got this vendor and then I've got this table keyed on vendor and then average duration, the fact that the vendor is in both tables that's what allows me to do the join um, and we'll look at left joins in a lot more detail in our next module um, but just to be aware that's what's happening there so now i've joined on average duration and now that will allow me to do the um, constraint i need to do which is checking for all durations that are less than those average durations okay now that's fine i can do those two separate steps all we're saying is here, you don't need to. There is F by, which allows you to do that in one step. So this is the syntax of F by. You can go to this link here um, to get a much more in detailed description of F by and lots of nice examples. Um, but as a high level, this is the formation of it. So it will always come after your where clause and it will, oh, sorry. Um, this is the formation. So the first parameter here um, is aggregation. It's within round brackets. So aggregation will be like your sum, min, max, average, um, whatever aggregation you want to do. Then the second one here is your data. So this is the column you want to aggregate on. Then you put the keyword F by, and then group is the column you want to group on. So in my example, I wanted to get my average durations. I wanted to filter on the, the total duration. Um, and then I wanted to group by the vendor. So this part here is the F by. So you can see I'm replacing my intermediate or additional column average duration that I had to calculate separately and join in. I'm actually able to do that all in the one line. And the result from that is the same as the result above. Now, if we just store that to a variable, let's call this um, no F by and save that and then we'll call this with f by and let's just prove that does what we think it does so no f by if i do we've got this match operator so with f by for example so this match operator is basically a, another way of doing equality in q and match basically says is the thing on the left identical to the thing on the right 
So if I run that and I get a 0B, that means it's not identical. Now, that's a bit um, confusing maybe because I've said these two things do the exact same thing. Not exactly true. There's one more step we need to take to make them identical. Um, and I can tell that by running my um, meta on both of those tables. So for example, if I run meta on no f by and meta on width f by, you'll see my original table, I had added on this column average duration. And the second uh, example, when I use f by, that column doesn't get added on. It's only, um, it's only done virtually, it's not actually appended on. Um, so I actually need to do something else here. So I'm gonna run a delete on that column in my no f by example. So I'm gonna do delete um, average duration from you no know, f by. And you can see I get a 1b return. So happy days, those things did the same calculation um, and my resulting table has got all the same records in it. Um, so I also like just to split that up a little bit just to illustrate that a bit better because it is, it is a new concept and can be a bit tricky to get your head around. Um, so what can help um, when you're trying to use an F by is just to first of all, pull out all the components one by one. So without worrying about your where clause yet, you can just say, right, I know I'm looking at duration. I know I'm looking at vendor here. Um, I'm gonna actually calculate the F by column. So I'm gonna say average duration F by vendor. Um, I actually also have uh, this time span cast here as well. So we haven't seen this before. This is actually changing our data to a time span. Again, we'll be looking at that and, and casting data types in a lot more detail in the next video or in a future video. Um, but for now, um, I can actually just show you the difference between those to help. So I'll just call this one um, one and this one two. And I'll get rid of the time span here just so you can see the difference between these. So when I run this, you'll see I've got average duration one, average duration two, um, and I've also added this condition at the end. So let's go back up and have a quick look at what uh, our original res by table did. So if I had, I had these average durations and this is there. So if I run the meta on this, you can see, oh, I can't run meta before show. I'm just running meta res by here. So this average duration is actually a float. Um, so I have got 6.4, 7.6 and 7.2. So you can see my float value here when I calculate that same thing is gonna be the same. So you can see I've got the 7.2s in there. In there, so that's the same thing as above. Um, now I'm gonna cast that to a time span just so that I can compare it visually for myself. So I wanna compare duration with average duration um, which is gonna be easier to do when they're both the same data type. So for example, um, I'm saying, right, well, um, my average duration for VTS was always seven, or sorry, was always 12 minutes. So you can see anywhere where 12 is greater than what we had in their duration, we get a true. So you see here, these were all 17 is obviously greater than 12, 19, 27, 23, and then aha, oh, one trip cost eight minutes, or, or duration was eight minutes, the next one was four minutes. And you can see for these two, and get this getting this true condition here so that that's the bit that's the next step is adding in um my comparison to see is it actually less than the average so hopefully that's helpful and um, that's just a bit more uh, of a breakdown to see you can actually just see visually yourself is this doing what i expect it to do and then once you're happy with it you can take this part of the query and you can write that all on one line like we did above up here Okay, so that's F by. Um, have a go at exercise seven. Um, just a note, when you're reading these kind of questions, it's useful to know, so, so for example, we've got which payment type produces the highest average tip when only trips with a fare larger than the average for each vendor is considered. So after the when, that's usually when you've, you'll have the filter by portion. Um, and then on the left-hand side is, is the kind of comparison um, part which might help you break that down. But I recommend just trying to break it down step, like, step by step like I did here, um, and you can see what's going on and be able to determine it that way. Okay, that's F by. Um, have a go at those exercises and I'll see you in the next video.